As shy girl in a white veil is in fear as she stands on the stage to auction off her first night, the bot has lifted her dress slightly. Comme annonciatrice d'un bonheur, d'un bonheur qu'un seul d'entre vous connaîtra d'une manière unique. Her words cause the men to jump at the chance to bid for her, and each of them is determined to raise the price of the auction. 3,800, Mr. Blondin. This story takes place in Terrace, France, at the end of the 19th century, while the aristocrats and barons spend their time in brothels of all sizes, obsessively auctioning off girl after girl as a way to show off their status. The homeless girls became the tools of their dirty trade. This brothel, Paradise, is run by Hortense. It's a place of nightly entertainment and party, but there's a crisis in the seemingly thriving business. Late one night a few days ago, Rose arrived at the door of the Paradise alone trying to find her mother, whom she hadn't seen in years. She can't remember her mother's face, but only knows that she works in the brothel called Paradise. Rose is about to marry her boyfriend and wants her mother to come to her wedding. She doesn't want her boyfriend to know that her mother is a prostitute, so she has to lie to him and tell him that her mother works as a maid in a rich man's house. Rose arrives at the entrance of the Paradise, which is very busy but closed, and only rich men are allowed to come in and out. Instead of seeing her mother, Rose is found alone by a strange man who claims to be a naturalist painter. He asks Rose if she would like to get a job here, as he knows the owner's wife well. Rose immediately denies it and says she's just looking for someone. The painter also told Rose that it was difficult to find someone here because the women could only go out once a week. After asking Rose for some information, the painter said that he might know the person she was looking for and that the woman would be ransomed by someone else tonight. So if she didn't meet her, she might not have a chance, knowing that tonight is the last chance to recognize her mother. Rose immediately wants to ask the painter to help bring her in, but the artist asks her a strange question. T'as un fiancé? J'en cherche pas. Ah, qui t'es venu alors? Tu me crois pas capable de venir toute seule jusqu'à Paris? Rose didn't say anything about her fiancé for fear of revealing her secret. Then the painter took her to knock on the door. The housekeeper obviously didn't like the poor painter, but she took one look at the girl behind him and understood. And so Rose entered the paradise. What she saw was a very raunchy scene. Their exaggerated performances leave the innocent Rose with no place to turn. The painter then gets up and leaves, leaving Rose sitting at the table, not knowing what to do. She fights back her shock and tries to find the object of her desire among the slutty women. And the poor painter quietly approached the housekeeper to start their business. The housekeeper has some concerns about Rose's identity. Ah, la personne ici, c'est sûr. C'est une fille seule. Et en plus, elle a du tempérament, non? The housekeeper was persuaded to offer him 100 francs. After all, there must be a lot of money to be made with Rose's qualifications, but as a rule, she wouldn't pay a penny until her virginity was verified, as the painter is delayed and the scene becomes more and more absurd. Rose is ready to pick up her clothes and leave in fear, but the housekeeper stops her in her tracks. She asked Rose to pay for the evening, two dinners with champagne for 128 francs. Rose, unaware that she had been sold, expected the painter to return to pay. She pulled out all the money in her pocket and had only four francs. The housekeeper said she couldn't leave until she paid her debt. Rose now realizes that she has been deceived. The girl lay on the bed with her legs spread in despair as the man inspected her body. As she stumbled out, the next man tweaked her head to check she was clean. There was no vitality left in the eyes of the girl who was at the mercy of the man. A few days earlier Rose had come to Paris in search of her mother, but she had been coaxed by a strange man and sold to a brothel for 200 francs to prevent Rose from escaping. The brothel housekeeper locked her in her room. Rose knocked on the door all night with a broken heart. Je veux voir la police. Rose naively hoped that the police would do her justice, but the sheriff told her that. Tu crois pas il faut mieux le faire au chaud dans une jolie maison et en gagnant des sous en plus? The sheriff suggests that Rose accept Paradise's offer to work off her debt. After all, it wasn't easy being locked up in a prison where the women were even more brutal than the animals. But Rose wasn't afraid of such intimidation because having grown up in a convent. She could never accept to work in a bravo. It was then that Rose finally admitted that she had a fiancé and that she was about to get married and that her fiancé would help her pay off her debts. Rose's words came as a shock to them. After all, the housekeeper had lied to her thinking she was a lonely girl. The sheriff thought for a moment and told the housekeeper to leave. Then he came to Rose and whispered to her that he ran a slaughterhouse for prisoners. He couldn't guarantee that every prisoner executed was guilty. Apparently the sheriff and the brothel were in cahoots. They were working together to deprive poor girls of their bodies. When the sheriff threatens Rose with the life of her fiancé, she's desperate to compromise. After passing her physical, she was told that the rules of the trade for prostitutes were that she was not allowed to go out with her hair down. 
She was not allowed to talk to men with women and children around them. No stopping on public roads. No public places. No churches. No schools. Rule after rule echoed in Rose's ears. And she couldn't accept that she was about to begin her downward spiral. Rose couldn't hide the fact that she hadn't been home all night from her fiancé. She confessed that her mother was a prostitute and that she was tricked into going to a brothel yesterday to see her mother. She assured her fiancé that no one had touched her yesterday. But how can a man believe that? He accused Rose that if she had revealed her mother's identity earlier, then he would never have let her go looking for her. However, the police burst in and wanted to take Rose away unless her fiancé could pay off the debt Rose owed from her work at Paradise last night. Upon hearing this, her fiancé insisted that he believed Rose had lost her virginity, so he wanted to break off the engagement with her immediately. Rose could never have imagined that the man who said he loved her so much would be so heartless. Rose was taken back to the police station, where the sheriff issued her a work permit. She lost her freedom from that moment on, and Paradise Bud, Hortense, immediately organized an auction for Rose to sell her debts. The first night, a woman arrives at the brothel. A prostitute applies ointment to her skin to make it soft and supple. She teaches the naive Rose how to impress the men. Under the prostitute's care, Rose was a different girl from the innocent girl she had been yesterday. And the prostitute was very pleased with her work. But Rose felt that the earrings didn't feed in with the overall look. So she asked her to find a more appropriate pair. After all, tonight's auction of Rose's first night was the most important event in the entire Paradise Brothel. But after leaving her, Rose immediately poured alcohol on the candles to sterilize them, unwilling to let the men get away with their deal. When the prostitute returned, she stopped her immediately. <laughs> the housekeeper heard the commotion and came immediately. She took one look and realized what was going on. The housekeeper immediately examined Rose to ensure that the auction would continue tonight. By now, Rose was in complete despair, with no light left in her eyes. And then Rose's auction began. After Hortense's eloquent introduction, Rose became as sweet as a peach in early summer. The men then raised the bing to a high level of enthusiasm. In the end, Rose's first night was auctioned off by an old man for 6,500 francs, and she was sent to his room. But the old man was in poor health. When he tries to solve his problem with drugs, Rose takes advantage of the situation and throws a vase of flowers at him. Rose, in a state of shock, rushed out of the room screaming and running away. She tries to escape from this undignified cage, but a man gets in the way. It was Pierre, Hortense's brother. The client who had just been beaten was now clamoring for his money back. Rose spat at him and refused to give in. <laughs> the tiny Rose was caught in Pierre's grip and was unable to break free. Pierre then dragged her into the room, and no one knew what would happen to her that night.